Hi guys, welcome back to Money and Chi. And today, ang di discuss natin is SUC or Semirara Mining. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, please subscribe and hit the notification button para palaki kang updated. Of course, guys, if you want to join my Patreon account, you can join my Patreon account. <laughs> the link is here and in the description box. So what you will gain out of it is actually you can have advanced videos of me of money and she uh, for the whole month i will also put there my portfolios in philippines and in us or in my etoro account and i have a weekly action plan where i put there what to buy what to sell and those stocks i actually invest myself into so whatever you can copy my investment if you want to yes, i'll be having my webinar and it's going to be on december 12 uh, you don't have to have experience in trading here i will teach you my strategy and how i gain 20 percent every year you can do this while you have a job so please join me and register now we only have limited slots so please secure your slots now um yeah if you're ready let's start now Okay guys, so one of the stocks that are always requested is SEC and probably you'll also see that a lot in my comment section. Uh, they always ask for SEC. One is because it has a very good dividend pay, right? So if you're a dividend investor, then SEC is one of the stocks that you are so into. If you're ready, what is the thing that we do in our fundamentals analysis? It's the ABC strategy. So for A, let's do the analysis or analyze right now. Okay, so for analysis, of course, the first one is qualitative analysis. In terms of qualitative, of course, we check the management. And the management, of course, SEC is owned by DMC or David M. Consuni. Ah, ha, ha. Kala niyo kung ano yung DMC, no? So, DMC is David M. Consuni, which is the founder of DMC. Um, or DMCI, di ba? So, the DMC is the mother company and one of its subsidiaries is SEC or Semerara. So, ano ba ang business ni Semerara? Semerara is a energy company. So, they have both supply of raw material, which is coal, and they also have power generation. So, pero yung power generation parang medyo bago lang siya. The core business before is actually the coal, okay? So, what is coal? What is coal? Ito ba eh yung coal kids? <laughs> De, joke lang. So, coal, you use that for um, thermal power plants, di ba? So, di ba may oil, may coal, and then ngayon may renewable energy. But before renewable energy, there's actually coal power plants. And it's usually used for base load. Ang base load meaning this is the base. <laughs> From the word itself, base. Okay? So, kasi yung kuryente meron niyang curve, di ba? So, meron peak and then the base. Okay? So, for the peak, we call that peaking plants. Okay? So, nagsaserve lang sila kapag ka high demand. Kunyari, um, ano ba yung mga high demand na oras? Ito yung mga lunch time, di ba? Kasi napakainit. So, lahat gumagamit ng aircon. Lahat na mamalunch. Lahat ng ate na mamalunch at nanonood ng TV at the same time. So, maraming gumagamit ng kuryente during that time. So, those are peaking plants. So, if you are cold plants, then, nung ka sa base load, so ibig sabihin kahit na mag-fluctuate yan, meron pa rin mga planta na nag operate 24 hours. So, those are base load, okay? Um, and for base load, of course, dahil base siya, <laughs> kailangan mas reliable yung, yung source of energy mo. So, we use coal and, sorry, and for that, you have to actually create a steam na magpapaikot sa turbina. We discussed this before in ASEN, di ba? So, if you want to learn more about that, you can click on the link above that that's about ASEN and you will learn about a little bit about thermal plants. And as explained before, for you to create that steam, you have to burn coal. So, coal is parang uling na pinangsisiga mo. Okay? So, that, that coal... Um, that coal is like the uling na ginagamit mo para mag-create ng heat. Diba? Para siyang uling, pero not really. Charcoal, diba? Pero it's just coal. No char. Char! Yan. So, um, 
So the thing is, because before I used to work in thermal com or coal companies as well. Uh, bali balita lang naman. <laughs> One of the problems about Semirara coals is that the heating value is not that good. Okay, so the higher the heating value, it means that the better the better it is. Bakit? Kasi mas malakas yung, mas konting coal yung kailangan mo at the same heat, di ba? Kasi heating value. And then there's also heat rate. So there's a component about that. And I just know, I just remember na hindi siya ganun ka ganda. So, um, and for you to create a power plant kasi that is huge, let's say, 1,000 megawatt power plant, usually, naka-design na kung ilang, kung anong heat rate at saka heating value mo for that plant. And if the coal of Semerara is not the same with that, so usually they have to mix it with some other better quality coals so that they can obtain the same heating value that they need. And therefore, um, anong problema nun with regards to to the business, di ba? The problem is, konti lang yung masasuplayan mo. Diba? Either yung mga power plants na before nila generate, dinesign yun, is nakakontact mo na sila. Oo, oh, ito ah, magsusupply ako sa'yo. Ganyan. So, um, magsusupply ako sa'yo. So, dapat ganito yung heating value. Ganyan. So, yun yung magiging problem. The good thing about Semirara is that they know this as well. So, what they did is they created their own power plants. Para naman, syempre, yung supply ng coal plants nila is actually mapupunta doon. Diba? And they have subsidiaries. They have, um, uh, corporate partnership, ganyan. They use that um, for them to be able to supply, diba? And to, um, yeah, gamitan na lang ng connection, <laughs> So, DMC has a very good connection and partnership with other companies. Of course, it, it has, a, um, it's been there for the longest time. It's actually, DMC is actually the oldest construction company, company in the Philippines. So, as you can see, kung nag- gawa ka ng building, malamang nakadil mo si, si Kunsuni, di ba? So, and because of that, it's a very good um, indicator that DMC has, or SEC as well, has a very good um, report in terms of the business in, in Philippines. So, that's one thing. That's a good thing. Of course, Kunsi, Kunsuni, the management is good. Um, yeah, it, it, they have good businesses as of the moment and that's the reason why they have good dividends but they have good earnings and they can release that earnings as dividend so i will show you the annual report and you can also see this and i will also put the link below where you can find it so you can read it and you can learn more about the project uh, about stc so i know that one some of you guys are thinking like paano yan nag release na si kusi si doe na wala nang cool Puro renewable energy. Hindi na mag-approve ng coal. So, uh, what is the effect on DMC or SEC at least? So guys, as you know, of course, they already have contracts. So the contracts usually for for um, this coal supply last for 2 to 5 years. Um, sometimes they hedge it, ganyan. Pero most of the time, it's contracted, diba? And as I mentioned before, usually the power plants designed on the based on the heating value and heat rate of the coal itself that they plan to source it. So, of course, DMC is one of the local source. So, if you want to import, diba? If you want to import, that's good. But like, for example, there's a problem in terms of chain, supply chain. Kagaya niyan, diba? Nagkaroon ng problema sa, ano, sa pandemic. So, of course, magkakaroon ng problema sa, sa supply niyan. And DMC is locally placed here in the Philippines so they can actually supply to local unless if they have extra if it's not contracted but of course that's what you're looking at if if those plants that are already running and it will take 20 years before those plants actually close okay hindi naman siya agad-agad na tapos na okay re wala nang coal of course hindi ganon guys um as you know there's an energy transition hindi naman kinabukasan solar na lahat hindi di mangyayari yon una sa lahat 
solar is not that reliable dahil nagsispike yan. So, kung gusto nyo na 100% solar kayo at walang battery, dahil ang battery is mas mahal pa sa solar, guys. So, kung walang battery, eh, masisira lahat ng appliances nyo. And kung mag-add naman kayo ng battery, eh, pagkamahal-mahal. Dahil ngayon, eh, mahal na mahal pa siya. At bukod dun is... These resources will also finish kasi minamina rin yan eh, ba? Hindi naman siya, ano lang, baka lang or something like that. So, these resources are used by parang mining, ba? Like for example, battery has um, cobalt and there's, I think, only three countries that has that. Or I'm not sure. Based on my research before. Pero it's not that reliable as of the moment and mostly you can see that in other countries as well that they they are that they are saying that we will be 100% green energy by 2050 okay let's just say that it's possible that you can be 100% RE by 2050 by at some point then that's around 30 years from now so it means that even if there's coal, don't worry about it because it's gonna take 30 years before they actually close. And by that time, probably SEC has found its way to actually transition as well in, from coal to probably renewable energy. Maybe yung coal plants, they can change into biomass or biogas or whatever. Whatever um, technological way that they can, but a of course, at the end of the day, they will be having plans about it, okay? This is one important thing that I saw that is really good is dun sa value chain nila. So they have one, exploration and development, and they explained it here. Uh, the location, volume, and quality of coal deposits are determined by conducting geological investigation. Geo, uh, yeah. It's the same with geothermal as explained last week or last week. Um, company video Semerara Island in Antique has the largest coal deposit in the Philippines stakeholders engagement is a vital on how we conduct business and achieve better project outcomes foster blah 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 whatever and of course the second one is extraction ito na yung in excavate in extract na nila yung coal then the next one is stockpiling ito yung ini stock nila <laughs> Stockpiling or the storage, diba? So I remember na na nag work pa sa Team Energy and um, sometimes may <laughs> um, we have this huge land and then that's where you put the coal. Because there's a proper way of handling your coal as well. Hindi yun siya ilalagay mo lang sa bodega and everything. So it has to be handled properly. Um, it helps ensure a stable supply of quality coal. Yeah. Uh, which results in interrupted operations and income st income stability for our stakeholders. Okay. Blending. The coal is segregated by quality requirements that meet customer specifications. So, I think I explained ko kanina, bina-blend nila yung yung coal ni Semerara with other coal. Pero I think Semerara has its tier then merong good quality <laughs> to not very good quality coal and they still blend that together we believe quality coal to we deliver quality coal to ensure customer satisfaction we aim to satisfy our customers through our product quality next one is rehabilitation and i just want to emphasize this because i think i mentioned before that i don't really invest into mining company unless they have very good reputation in terms of um, rehabilitating their previous sites and their CSR. So, what I like about SEC, and you can find it in their annual report, is that they really emphasize on how they protect the environment, at least. And, you know, there are a lot of mining companies, but they don't really adhere, or even though there's DNR, alam natin na hindi naman lahat ng nag-audit ng DNR is <laughs> audited well. And that's why there's a lot of problem in terms of our environment, our mga tag dito, yung mga uh, mountains natin, di ba? And alam ni Mama, Mama Gina yan, ni Mama Gina, <laughs> na sa mga langit na wa, uh, Mama Gina. Uh, of course, yun yung pinaglalaban niya, di ba? Na yung mga companies like this, they should follow the rules. Kasi, bago sila makakuha ng service contract, 
they have these rules to follow na kailangan i-protect mo yung environment, kailangan pagtapos mo nang minahan yung yung um, mountain na yan. Kunyari, di ba? Kunyari, pit mining, di ba? Kasi pit mining, i hinuhukay mo, di ba? Or tinatanggal mo yung... Siyempre, bago ka maghukay, tatanggalin mo muna yung mga puno, di ba? So, pag nahukay mo na lahat, nakuha mo na lahat ng resource, iwanan mo na lang. Diba? Yun yung hindi maganda. So, sa actually, yung DNR has service contracts na dapat sa mga contract na to, dapat, bago ka umalis, taniman mo ulit, ibalik mo sa dati. Ang tawag doon is rehabilitation. Merong uh, reforestation. May, uh, nakalimutan ko yung mga ibang tawag-tawag doon. Pero, you have to bring it back to its previous state. Kung yung lupa na yun is puno ng puno at tinanggal mo at hinukay mo, dapat, bago ka umalis, taniman mo ulit ng puno. Okay? Yun yung requirements. And I just want to, to emphasize, at least in their annual statement, they are showing na they're doing their CSR to protect the environment. And that's very, very important for me as an investor because I look at that ESG. So, in global markets, important yan. You can see ESG reports or grading. Kasi a lot of investors, lalo na yung mga, ano, mga funds, international funds. And we know that in Philippines, a lot of international funds are coming in as well. So, if they don't put a good report on CSR, those funds will not get into it. Diba? Hindi sila papasok dun sa investment mo. And that's very critical. And that's why SSC, SCC is one of the, I think it's a good one, at least for me. Okay, so after rehabilitation, they have shipping, then combustion, generation, and delivery. So the good thing about SEC is they have the full value chain, diba, from coal to electricity generation and we know naman if you get the whole thing mas malaki yung kikitain mo than just doing the generation or just supplying diba kasi makakat mo yung cost and therefore mas malaki yung margin mo all right and i think that's one of the reason why it's, it's a good company because they thought about that they they were able to achieve that and hindi lang siya masyadong sikat in terms of power but it was able to do that. So this is the business structure that they have right now. And you can see that. And this is the market presence. As you can see, they also export to China and Taiwan, um, India, and Thailand. So kahit na hindi sila masyadong binibili dito, they, are, they have international sales, which is good. Anyways, guys, so the next thing to do is quantitative analysis. Okay, so in terms of valuation naman, as you can see, the price went down from 2015, it was 34, and by the end of 2019, it was 22, and now it's around 11, so parang 50% off from last, ano, close niya in last year, 2019. Um, in terms of earnings, the earnings is slightly higher than the earnings five years ago but from from 2015 it went up and then up and then slightly down in 2018 and grabe yung down niya in 2019 diba? so in terms of earnings medyo hindi siya maganda and we can also see by 2020 now of course it will also go down and hopefully it can recover 2021 so right now if you're gonna buy it definitely it's gonna be low kasi mababa rin yung earnings niya. But if you wait longer, maybe in a year or two, it, it can recover. So I don't see any fast recovery with Semerara mining. And dividend also went down. So the best dividend is 2017. Bonga. <laughs> And then 2018 went down and it went down in 2019 as well. Of course, because of the um, declining earnings as well. But I think it's because of the rehabilitation of the two plants that they have. Um, of course, if you have loan for that, magiging tax shield and everything. Okay.
Okay guys, so tapos na tayo sa A as Analyze and then now we move on to B or Broker's Recommendation. Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at for Broker's Recommendation is First Metro. And they have... Uh, sorry. But this is October 30 and now it's November <laughs> 16 so it may be different. Um, so they just said that the last rated price that time is 10.3. Actually, I want to buy that time. But hindi pa ako bumali. Well, 11.5 na siya ngayon. Um, consensus target price is 19. And upside is around 84. So this consensus price, hindi naman palagi nangyayari yan. But if everybody thinks that way, then it might go that level. So for that long, just be careful. Um, don't think as is. And we'll see sa charting kung ano ba talaga yung dapat. Okay guys, so the next thing to do is letter C. Tama ba C or dito? <laughs> okay, but we have to do the charting now. As you can see, uh, the last time that it was 10 is... Or at its current price is 2010 around this area 2010 so for me this is actually a good price to buy because this was 10 years ago price it's that discounted so yeah and aside from that uh, you can also see that it just crossed above its 50 MA, so it started to become bullish. So I would definitely probably buy when it touches this 50 MA, and then hopefully it crosses this. Yeah, and so for me, I think <laughs> chart wise, it hasn't really moved up since it's. Um, it hasn't really moved up since March nung nagbaba siya ng grabe, di ba? So I think it's still a good time to enter and medyo mabagal siya mag-react sa market. So right now kasi nagtaasan na lahat. So this time, we can use this. So for for short, I think uh, this is a good time to buy. So far as we can see, mukhang good naman siya in terms of ano, it's price right now. So kung ang um, PE noon is... But definitely, the PE will actually be almost the same kasi medyo bad yung earnings this year. As we all know, maraming uh, plant ang nakasara and therefore, the supply is not that good. And of course, that will hurt the earnings, diba? But it's the good time to buy now habang mura pa siya. Tapos next year, once everything is normal, then you will expect the same return as it has like let's say 2019 and with the lower price that you bought this year the hell mas mura pa siya ngayon diba so and the reason why it's mas mura is because you are discounting the fact na hindi magkakaroon ng dividend probably baka hindi mag dividend by the end of the year um syempre you you think that the the company is not doing well so you discount more yung price na yon dahil of course um, coal nga sila, diba? And there's a move, a transition to RE as well. So, maraming investors are actually discounting it. And that's why it's very low. So, let's see. Okay, guys. So, hopefully, you learned something new again today. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe and share it with your friends. So, if you guys wanted to join my Patreon account, you can find the link here. And it's actually in my description box. You can find it there and click there and join my Patreon account so you will have ahead of time video. And of course, I will put there my portfolio, what to buy, what I will be buying and what I will be selling. So you can join me as I buy stocks and I sell it and something like that. So you can um, do position trading with me. So my annual required return is 20%. As I explained in my last video, the rule of 72, that's my um, IRR. So that's my goal every year. And if you want to join me for get 20% goal every year, you can follow my investment 
strategy or the stocks that I will buy and when and when to sell when to buy it when to sell it and of course guys if also you wanted to invest on global market you can join me in my eToro account um, I have the link below as well you can help me and click there and open your own account so you don't have to load immediately or you don't have to deposit any amount just click on that link below and open an account and see what's happening in the market you can find me my username is Chi Chow it's here as well you can find it and you can see what I'm doing there, what are my portfolio, uh, where am I invested, and you can copy me in the future if you want to. It's up to you. <laughs> and that's it, guys. So hopefully I help you today, okay? So thank you so much and have a great week.